All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fabs in the house, and uh, welcome back to the channel. Look at this, I got a couple items um, on the table. Um, very different, very similar. They're, it's the same thing, but pretty much not. This is a new one, as you can tell from the design, uh, probably, and this is the old one, right? Uh, probably you can tell this is um, it's something between 1933, it started the production. Uh, from Lights uh, um, in Wetzlar, Germany. This is Ernest Lights, which is the uh, father of uh, Leica. In fact, Leica means a, a lights camera. And uh, um, this is a unit, of, uh, it's a, an optical uh, rangefinder that you would uh, mount uh, on your Leica or your uh, rangefinder camera or whatever camera um, to check the distance uh, of. Uh, uh, the object from the uh, focal plane. Uh, this is like the uh, finder would you would look through, um, which is coupled with the range finder, which is running on uh, the inside of this barrel, which is metal nickel plated. This is a marvel of uh, uh, mechanic uh, engineering and construction and uh, like, I mean, the smoothness of this wheel, it's super good. So pretty much uh, this one um, lines up a couple of images uh, that are created with prisms on the inside of this barrel um, to uh, a point where they overlap perfectly. Uh, uh, and uh, you can just check the distance that that image, uh, very, very nice and crisp, is being formed of. That's uh, going to be the distance that the uh, subject is from uh, the unit. So uh, this uh, is a feet uh, scale. It runs from uh, 100 feet, I mean, from the infinite to 100 uh, and then 50, 30, 20. You see, you have all the scale up to 2.5 feet. But I mean, it's uh, mainly uh, for the greater distances because um, for the smaller distances, you can actually use this uh, thing over here, uh, which you just, uh, I don't know if you can see, but maybe yeah, you can see it like uh, it's a laser range finder. So optical range finder, laser range finder, pretty much 90 years past uh, in the between the these two tools. Uh, so this one, for example, is uh, let's see the wall right over there. You see uh, 60 centimeters, 0 0.1 uh, meter, whereas if I would have to uh, measure, let's see from here, I'm doing it and it's going to be, yeah, something like that. You see 2.5 feet. I mean, it's of course not accurate. Uh, I mean, not as accurate as this guy. This guy is like really accurate down to the, look at that. You have three digits uh, past the, uh, the meter uh, digit. And uh, of course, it's going to be starting from here to uh, this point. And the laser is just going to uh, measure the distance that uh, uh, your subject uh, is uh, uh, from you, I mean, in this case, from this point right over here. So you can just have it like on laying on the ground uh, to measure the ceiling or on up against a wall to measure any distance uh, that you want. So uh, there's um, a couple of uh, advantages to both. I mean, the size, first of all, duh. This thing you can just really put in your, like, anywhere in your pocket uh, uh, of your shirt. It's very, very tiny. If you want to see how big this guy is, let's say 77 millimeters uh, long. It's not very, uh, not very big, and it's like a 18 millimeters uh, uh, wide at this at that point of course it's gonna be a little bit wider there this guy is like 43 millimeters by 114 uh, so yeah it's you know a little bit bigger not too big but still kind of like a nokia it would be you remember guys those phones yeah this kind of like looks like a, looks like something like a phone from the 2000 and anyways uh, bigger uh, Weight wise, not really mm, that much of a difference, I would say. Probably this guy might be heavier. Let's see. So we have, uh, uh, let's do in uh, grams, because uh, we did uh, 
meters. So this fella is gonna be 59 grams, and uh, this guy is gonna be uh, 87, 88 grams. So a little bit heavier, yeah, but still, we are in a range. Uh, uh, of portability for both. This, of course, is going to be occupying less volume, 100%, and uh, uh, this one is going to be a little bit bulkier, but uh, we have uh, uh, an advantage for this guy, especially if you do landscapes, uh, um, uh, because the laser uh, limitation would be the visibility of the actual laser, so the point till you can physically see that little red dot that you're just shining to catch to measure the distance so in that case for example in my experience i can pretty much uh, see the laser up to i don't know six uh, ten meters and then it's just lost it based on the texture unless it's just like a plain white wall which is probably not gonna be because you're gonna be shooting landscapes anyway so you're gonna be have only having like foliage or mountains or whatever you know trees so it's gonna be very hard to see this little dot uh, uh, past uh, probably 10 meters i would say it's gonna be very hard so that's when this fella comes into place and you pop this out uh, and uh, i would say from the 20 feet i mean 30 feet to the 100 at infinite you can actually pretty have a good guess of your depth of field you can measure something uh, uh closer and something uh you know a little bit farther and then judge and make a decision of your aperture based on that information on the longer distance which you can quickly uh grasp because uh, you're gonna uh, you know uh, align once and then for the far uh, farther uh, items for example you want in focus and then uh, you're gonna align for the closest one you want and then you're gonna check the range and you're gonna go and replicate uh, that uh, required depth of field on the aperture using the hyperfocal technique on your actual lens uh, assuming that your lens is showing the actual apertures uh, uh, on the focusing scale to take advantage of the hyperfocal technique. But anyways, this guy, of course, comes in hand for the uh, longer distances, not so much for these in my case. And I mean, by the way, this is a beautiful item and cost wise, they're pretty much the same. They're going to be like a hundred dollar each. So not super expensive, but also not properly cheap because it's already like a hundred bucks. So, um, it's a great tool. I mean, it's a great object. It's a great item. If you like mechanical things, uh, I do. I, I, I love the item uh, by itself. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm into this kind of things too. Uh, you know, little trinkets, little uh, metal things that are uh, doing a little bit of a function, a little bit of a geeky, nerdy. And also I'm into some, uh, of course, more uh, electronic, more modern looking uh, devices, but uh, both doing the same thing in very, very different uh, ways. Uh, uh, like, uh, of course, uh, you get the Disto D1 and uh, from lights right over here, you get the focus and uh, beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful to have, uh, you know, these two items from pretty much the same company, almost 100 years apart for a device that evolved uh, uh, this much uh, into the you know, technology scale. So there you have it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Stay tuned.